I want to bring in our chief legal analyst now and one of the co-anchors of Nightline, Dan Abrams, who's also been following this trial with me every step of the way. Dan, this jury made up of entirely women jurors. Uh, five of the six were actually mothers themselves. And you make it very clear the legal bar they had to look at. Not George Zimmerman necessarily, the person sitting across from them, but there was a legal bar. That's right. We don't know right now what these jurors think about George Zimmerman. We don't know if they believe George Zimmerman's account of what happened that night. Remember, his account is that Trayvon Martin attacked him. We don't know what they thought about that. Here's what we do know. We do know that they had reasonable doubt in this case. And what does that mean? The heart of the defense was self-defense. George Zimmerman basically saying that in that moment that Trayvon Martin was shot, he reasonably believed that great bodily injury was about to be inflicted on. Bottom line is, George Zimmerman's team argued he was on the bottom, Trayvon Martin was beating him, and at the moment that he shot him, that uh, it was at that very moment that he reasonably believed that great bodily injury would be inflicted on him. We don't know if the jurors believed it. We do know that they had reasonable doubt, at the very least. I'll be very interested to hear from them as to exactly what they thought but about But so much of this case was made of that 911 call, the screams on the tape, the 14 screams, and uh, who the juror would believe ultimately was behind those screams. And also, the 911 operator said, are you following him? We don't need you to do that. Does that factor into this, or does it come down to whether or not they thought at that particular moment, George Zimmerman feared for his life? The prosecution tried to make this about who initiated uh, the altercation. The prosecution argued that it was clear that Trayvon Martin was stalked by George Zimmerman. Zimmerman's team completely disputes uh, that notion. But as a legal matter, that may not even matter. As a legal matter, the most important question, and maybe the only question, is what happened at that very moment when George Zimmerman shot Trayvon Martin? What was going on in George Zimmerman's mind? Would that be considered self-defense, and at the, the least, was it reasonable doubt? Because that's the big question. These jurors, at the very least, had reasonable doubt about self-defense. Which is why it's going to be fascinating, Dan, to hear what these jurors have to say about uh, the family of Trayvon Martin and, of course, about George Zimmerman. Uh, in the meantime, we knew of that question late in the day. They'd been deliberating all day today. They asked the judge for instructions again on manslaughter, which, of course, was just beneath second-degree murder. The judge responded and said, you need to be more specific than that with your question. And then they never followed up with a question. Well, I, as you and I talked about when that question came out, I thought that should make the defense team nervous. Why? Because it meant that, at the very least, they were very seriously considering manslaughter. And as a technical legal matter, I have always believed that this is a very tough case for prosecutors. The minute I heard these jurors are seriously considering manslaughter, I thought, whoa, this defense team's got to be concerned about that. In retrospect, we now see the jurors never even got back to the judge. The judge said be more specific. The jurors never even got back to the judge. So I think that we can really deduce from that that there was one juror, likely, who had a question who wanted something resolved, but that by the time the judge asked them the question, the jurors had really worked it out amongst themselves without even needing to go back to the court with a specific answer as to what they were looking for. Our chief legal affairs anchor, Dan Abrams, and co-anchor of Nightline, Dan, thanks.